is not just that. Look at me. Judge me by my size, do you? Hmm? Hmm. And where you should not. For my ally is the Force. And the powerful ally it is. Life creates it. Makes it grow. Its energy surrounds us and binds us. Luminous beings, though we, not this crude matter. You must feel the force around you. Here, between you, me, the tree, the rock, everywhere. Yes, even between the land and the ship. Welcome, nerds, to the Frugal Force. This is season two, episode two. How's everyone doing tonight? Doing good. Michigan good. Medicated and Galactimus Primer here this week. <laughs> hey. You guys remember uh, Michigan Medicated from the first season? <laughs> For the, what was it, one episode? <laughs> breakout, breakout star. She kills it. She kills it. If you guys don't uh, follow her, you can just search on Instagram for Michigan Medicated. Why don't you uh, go ahead and introduce yourself and uh, tell us how your week's going. Michigan Medicated, my week is going awesome. <laughs> um... Just took some clones the other day, and um, that's about it. Are you cloning? Are you cloning just in? Uh, are you using a machine? You got in cups, like in water, or how are you doing it? Yeah, I just cut them and put them directly into the water. Easiest nice. way to do it. <laughs> Nothing special. I mean, yeah. It, it works. I mean, the only reason to use a rooting hormone or anything special like that is to make it faster. It's going to root in just water. Just remember, you got to like change the water every couple of days or something because yeah. all the oxygen or whatever. Right. Yeah. Yeah. If you want to take care of them, but I've definitely uh, had some stragglers where I didn't change the water. It still worked out, but you know, you'll have those leaves that are yellow looking like this. <laughs> Lots of roots, though. Well, you saw you saw at Men Canico, we had what eight or ten solo cups sitting there with how many cuts? There's probably fucking a hundred cuts. We we let them soak for a little while in the water too. Oh yeah, I forgot oh, about yeah. that. They're in uh, little solo cups, and you everything about that place is just so caregiver. It's great. I love it. But uh, next up, actually, you know, Spar, you didn't really uh, introduce and let us know how your week went there. All right, well, I'm Spartan Grown. You can check me out. Find me on Instagram at Spartan Grown or uh, actually right here on YouTube. You'll find me on Michigan Bros Grow Show quite a bit or uh, growing with my fellow growers on the Cheap Home Grow channel. My week's been going really good, man. My week's, I'm, I'm blessed, man. I, I, I get to work with weed day in, day out. I live, I live it, man. It's, it surrounds me, so. Some days are tougher than normal, you know, when you got like maybe a harvest or something like that. But most days are fucking awesome, man. So I can't complain. I'd I'd, I'd look like a jackass if I was up here complaining about anything. <laughs> and uh, last stuff we got uh, Galactimus Prime, aka Bad Bunny Nutrients. How's uh, how's your week going down there? No, you were just talking to us about uh, setting up some outdoor already, like super planning ahead. What's going on, guys? Yeah, we're we're tinkering around with the idea. That's about all. Maybe throw some uh, mimosa crosses out, or something. See what happens. And one of these times, we're gonna have to get a meet up where we're getting together, and I'll pass you that uh, snow cane. That's a, mimo a mimosa cross. I think it was uh, Sour Snow and Mimosa, I think, was the cross. Yeah, that'd be awesome. We uh, we just popped some uh, some of that Grand Champagne from 2020. We got a couple of uh, 
feminized, uh, feminized uh, seedlings going. So we're uh, happy about that. The 2020, man, I, you can't go wrong with those guys. It seems like they got a lot of good, at least the genetics, at least the stuff that I've grown out, it's super fast growing in veg even. I mean, it just blows the fuck up. Big, huge fan leaves, and it just fucking blows up. Yeah, the, was it all three? The the Pinots of the Grand Champagne are crazy, and then and the new tent, the Snow King that you gave me, it it just dominates in size. Like it looks like it's you know two weeks ahead of all the other strains. I just posted a picture last night. Like I was just gonna say the frost. Out, dude, the frost on yours was fucking unbelievable. Crazy. That's that. Uh, I need to get in there and do a weekly, but that's that room that I stripped on the uh, the stripping or leaf stripping with the polish the other day. Well, damn, it's been like two weeks now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'll tell you what the the glue sniffer that we have in our room right now, the the node spacing is super close, and then the branching is is just crazy on it. I mean, there's so many branches. Yeah, I've never had like uh, a strain that made me switch what I, the type of cloning I was doing, uh, just to keep it around, to try and keep it around. Anyways, that Grand Champagne, it was the stalks were so thick, even when it, what it was a veg, you know, trying to clone it, that it was like blowing out root riots. I had to break out my old uh, bucket arrow cloner to just even try to clone those things. It was crazy. I remember that. That fucking root riot was just demolished by that thing. Blew it right the fuck out. And it seems to be the same for their snow cane, too. Like, I mean, those guys are breeding their uh, genetics and some gamma radiation. I can't wait to see. I hope that, like, the, the strain that we're getting here and the, the grow off is like those two, where it's just blowing people's minds. They cannot, they can't believe the vigor because. Yeah, I've, I've ran quite a few companies, and yeah, they are king of vigor so far. Yeah, and dude, that that cross sounds so fucking terpy. That's what I'm excited about. I love it, too. Like, in, like, outside, I think outside just their main crew, I mean, nobody's really got to taste it yet either. You know, it's, you know, they tested it, they made sure it's good to go, and then they give it to us, you know, to release it here with the grow off. It's, it's great because then they didn't they just do that with uh the pheno hunt was a snow cane right snow cane yep yeah that's that's genius and it helps out them and the, the patients so much because you have a instead of a huge team of people uh hunting and stabilizing a strain and making sure it's just safe for uh you know to sell this one right here is giving you guys the benefits of uh getting like the best possible cut of it too because uh then they go don't they give the option to or the option to get that cut or whatever or no they yeah so at the turn in at the turn in which is uh towards the end of february here so coming up soon i have to not only turn in flower for my entry but i turn in two clones of the of that flower those clones will be grown out and then at the end of the or, I mean, they said if you have more, you know, you can bring more, whatever. Or bring big plants. It doesn't matter. But um, the cool thing is, is at the, uh, I think it's the very end of February, we're having to get together for, like, the competition or the whatever. And uh, everybody gets to walk away with the winner. So whoever does win, their strain is going to be, their clones that they've turned in will be turned into cuts for everybody. So everybody that participates got the winning cut which is pretty badass that's awesome i mean we, we might have to work some I, I know they're offering uh 500 bucks in uh genetics and whatever uh if you bring the winning cut but maybe we need to work out something to where we can make sure we can get all that cut out to you know everybody that needs it i know if one of us gets it we'll have a ton of clones by the next event you know to hand out to people yeah for sure for sure and there's going to be a lot of interesting cuts because just from the ones that I kind of sifted through, there was uh, the one that I picked to enter was the one that's kind of like a strawberry sweet tart, like a really sweet strawberry smelling when it's grown. That's one of my favorite ones. And then uh, there was one that was like, 
real like more citrusy and then there was some real like gassy ones so there was some variation in there there was some that you could really and then the bud structures were even different on some some were like more flattened down rounder buds and then there's some more elongated uh buds with points but that's kind of the the six kind of gets that way it has kind of a fat bottom and then it gets a little point to it and uh i don't know there's just something about the six i, I wish i could you know, it's so frustrating because when I would listen to podcasts, I would be like, you know, somebody would answer, ask a question and no one would really answer the fucking question. Mm -hmm. But it's just, basically, it's just the grower's pick. You'll get your favorite plant, you know. And when, when that smell hits you and it just puts a smile on your face and then you smoke the product and you really enjoy it, that's the one you pick. It doesn't matter what everybody else thinks. Pick the, the one you like. That's, that's how I do it. <laughs> yeah, and there's lots of cannabis out there that smells good and tastes good, guys, but there's only so many that the minute you harvest it and you get it in there that you're like, oh, my God, I got to show this off. You know, this, this is amazing. You know, everybody that comes over, you're sticking it right in their nose. <laughs> like, those cuts are out there. Those, those strains are out there. You just got to keep hunting. And don't, don't give up just because you're, you got some okay because there's lots of good out there. That's how we are with uh, 2020 Sour Strawberry. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've got to smoke that uh, one time. Carlos brought it to our uh, after party at the Cup. Yeah, yeah. And uh, uh, besides us, we've only seen one other person running that. Mm -hmm. and, uh, we, have, we have one that's maybe two foot tall right now. And that was unique because I've had – there's tons of strains out there that say uh, strawberry on them, but none of them have had a strawberry taste. That one actually had a strawberry taste to it, which I thought was cool. I just wanted to eat it. <laughs> yep, that, that's how you know they're the fucking – that's the keeper, man, when you get that kind of reaction. And uh, right on that note – you know, we're talking about taste and whatnot. You know, tonight's subject is terpenes. And first, we're going to go over to just the basic info in case, you know, we like we like to try and cover everything here. So even for the people that are just starting out that don't really understand terpenes. And this is going to lead into a discussion where we discuss, or where we figure out, try to figure out anyways, is it better to have everything in a cannabis environment? Or is it better to leave some things out, be supplement with certain things to bring out a specific terpene or healing effect in our plant? Because we know, uh, like in the wine industry, because of the terroir and the environment of certain uh, uh, grapes or whatever, they taste a lot better than stuff that's grown, say, here in America. So... Terpenes 101. You guys already know them. It's it's what makes everything smell. I mean, it makes it's what makes oranges citrusy. They give pine trees their unique aroma. They're responsible for the relaxing effects in lavender. They're chemicals that determine how things smell. It's it's super simple. The cannabis plant itself has over a hundred different terpenes. Many of the terpenes that are produced by cannabis are also found elsewhere in nature. However, there are a couple of terpenes that are in high concentration in cannabis plants. Here's some of the examples of the main ones. There's, there's quite a few of them, but these are the ones that show up the most common. And the most common one is myrcene. Uh, myrcene, which can also be found in mangoes. That's why you hear a lot of people say uh, drink some uh, mango juice or eat a mango uh, and then, you know, smoke or medicate a half an hour later and it enhances the effects. Because uh, it's, it's because of the terpenes inside the, the mangoes. And I believe there might be some acid that helps uh, activate edibles. But anyways, <clears throat> myrcene, which is also found in mangoes, is the primary terpene found in cannabis plants. In fact, some plants can have up to 65% terpenes. It's like... It's one of the distinguishing uh, smells of cannabis when the, I guess, people that aren't educated in different uh, strains and whatnot, when they think cannabis, they think of the myrcene smell normally. And you can actually, I don't think so, but 
science says you can actually determine uh, the indica and sativa effects of a strain depending on its myrcene levels. If it has a, a higher myrcene, it'll be more of an indica effect. If the myrcene's on a lower level, it'll be a more sativa effect. And uh, this is common in like my strain, like my OG, uh, skunks, white widow, and a lot of cushions. Uh, you guys got a, a lot of experience with myrcene, I'm sure. Any, anything to say about that? No, I can just I can just tell you by personal experience that it does work. Like if you eat some mango, a little while before you smoke it, it'll, it'll hit you faster. Like you'll get, for me, I have to smoke several bowls before I start to even feel it. But if I ate, you know, some mango before, or, you know, I, I love mango anyway, like the flavored drinks and stuff like that. So I usually reach for something mango anyway, because I know about mercine. And then uh, it does seem to, uh, I don't think that like prolongs the effect, but I think it like hits me there faster. So, but uh, I've read from other people saying that they think that it actually enhances the high as far as it makes it even stronger. I haven't really experienced that, but maybe it's just because my limits higher or something. I don't know. Wasn't it the the mangoes in the, you watch John Collar, right? He's seen his, uh, he, I don't know if you do or not, but he, he toured, he's a pretty big organic guy on YouTube. And uh, he does a lot of tours, and he, he specifically says that he doesn't smoke cannabis, and he did a juicing episode, and I think it was the mangoes inside the juice that actually activated his high, and he got high for the first time. <laughs> I didn't I didn't remember. I do know I have watched him, and he's got, like, that special juicer that like, goes under a vacuum or something, so it, like, <laughs> preserves the terpenes, too. I want to get one of those. But, yeah, he uh, – that's fucking awesome. I didn't. I didn't see that one where he got. Did he get high on camera? Yeah, he he does. He, and he shows it for educational purposes too. I mean, it's John Kohler, GrowingWithYourGreens dot com. He's he's been doing a lot of good work for years. I mean, he shows out like all. He goes to people's houses that have these cool like regenerative uh, gardens and all that growing in their yard. Like people that don't use grass at all, they're just growing food in their front yard too. It's it's great. Yeah, I've, I followed him, but just recently, so I'll have to go back and try to find that one. I loved his video of, of his little feud with uh, his freeze dryer. <laughs> I think it was Harvest Right. Uh, having issues with that, and it's just, I don't want to get into it. It's a big, long story, but it's funny. Yeah, I remember seeing that. Nice little controversy there. It'll probably be his top video when you guys go to search for it. <laughs> probably. But uh, we'll, we'll jump on to the next one, which is uh, one of the ones I really like. And I think it's inside my, uh, I think this is like the sour taste that I'm, I'm normally craving in my sour melon. And that's uh, lemonine or lemonon, lemonine, right? I think I'm pronouncing that right. Yeah, lemonine. And the sec it's the second most abundant terpene found in cannabis. Lemonine can also be found in various citrus fruits and is responsible for the citrusy smell. However, it may not be present in all cannabis strains. Lemonine has a powerful antifungal and antibacterial property, and its great smell means that it is a common additive in household cleaning and cosmetic products. Lemonine can also help to bust stress and enhance mood. Huh, that's probably why I love it. Strains high in uh, lemonade include sour diesel. Yeah, that's normally, I'll see that on the shelf. If I'm at a dispensary, I grab that first. OG Kush, yeah. As well as Super Lemon Haze. Those all sound, those are all delicious strains. Yeah, you think about it, lemonade is like a lemon, so it's going to be your citrusy stuff. So think about it, when you smoke your citrusy stuff, even if it's like an orange, it's not even lemon, I'm expecting to get that mood lifting effect I'm, that more people call a sativa effect. Mm -hmm. I just know that when I get that, or a grapefruit even, I know that's going to be more of that uplifting and it's not going to be the sedative stuff. So you can use your nose is probably the best thing, your nose mm -hmm. and your taste buds to tell you what to expect with that bud because uh, you can use that, you know, when you figure out these terpenes and with experience, you'll, you'll be able to clue in on stuff before you even smoke it. Yeah. And uh, don't, don't touch your buds outright to get that smell guys. You can get like right up underneath it on the stock normally and get a little trichome and then you don't have to mess up none of your hairs or nothing. And you get a pre-smell 
like we almost need to do a little short on that because man you you every hair you damage you're decreasing yield a little bit yeah all these sh there's big shows out there too where the people are come, going off and just grabbing buds there and it, it drives me insane to see it's like man if someone goes in my grow and i'm first of all if you're blessed enough for me to walk you into my place do not grab my buds <laughs> oh my gosh I was so paranoid when I was walking down the the middle rows at Bitten Canica. Like I'm all I'm all ducking and whatnot. You're all like shimmying down at 20 miles an hour. Like oh man, I got this down. I'm gonna hit nothing. Yeah, it's a, it's an everyday thing. So I got to keep my my chin down too. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, I think other than the sour melon, that's probably one of the only ones I have uh, limonene in my garden you run anything that's strong in it uh i i don't know man i don't have i've never had anything terpene tested i'm going to start doing that now that i can kind of start affording it 45 dollars is not terrible i guess so i'm going to start with that spartan glue and i'm guessing there's a little bit in there because sometimes i get a, a, a lemon when i'm smoking that mm -hmm. uh, this last time it was a little bit of pepper which would be a different terpene but uh I wanted to add this lemonine real quick. Uh, one other thing that I had from uh, notes that I'd taken before was uh, it also has been shown to reduce heartburn and acid reflux. So Ooh. it's a good thing for that also. The one thing I have run that has had that I was for sure had this in it because it smelled straight like lemon pledge was Vortex by TGA Genetics, which would now be subcool seeds, I think. But yeah, that Vortex, whew, that puts you in a mood, boy. <laughs> It's really psychoactive. It wasn't uh, very sedative in any way, but uh, it was almost too soaring high for some people. But uh, I kept around for quite a while because I really enjoyed it. I did too. I, I, I bet you if I wouldn't have got it in clone for it, form, or form, I'm pretty sure I had some kind of viral. It was a really slow grower for me, so I had to get rid of it. But each grow, I mean, it was damn dank weed. Like all the subcool strains I've smoked, that was like the best one. Or TGA, I should say. We can't we can't leave Miss Jill out. Right, right. I want to try the, like, I like the older, you know, the older stuff. Like, when I look at a breeder's, like, for example, Subcool, he crosses everything, and so did Miss Jill. With a, she crossed a lot of things with uh, Space Queen. So I'd like to just run Space Queen because that must be something pretty goddamn special about that plant. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, like, when I went and got some stuff from Rasta Jeff, I read genetics. I I haven't ran it yet, but I bought Arise because he cr he crosses everything with Arise, you know, his, his Arise male. So I want that because if he thinks it's that good to cross with everything, then it must be something special. So there's a little hack for people when they're trying to pick seeds. I actually had – I don't know if it, they're related, but I have a so, uh, TGA collab that was the first pack of seeds I ever won from a YouTube show, and it was uh, – TGA and Heroes of the Farm, and it's Dog Walker, I think OG times Space Dude. So I don't know if that's like their their big male they had there for a while or not, but yeah, that's uh, Space Queen male. They just okay. call it Space Dude. Yeah, yeah. I've been I don't know. I've been like waiting forever to pop that. Like I don't want to pop it because it's like it's a memorable thing to me. Like I, this is the first pick I won. But I mean, damn, it's Heroes of the Farm, and I mean, we don't, who knows if we're going to see more TGA or not. Yeah, that's, uh, I would be popping those if you could. <laughs> that sounds fucking badass, dude. Yeah, I, I try to find info on that strain, and I really haven't been able to do it. Like, the only thing was that Sub said for, I think, for like 20 seconds in a stream one night that it was, the dog walker was like, uh, Heroes of the Farms, like, uh, favorite cut that summer or something like that it's pretty popular strain out there i've heard it a lot come up especially in potency so i, I don't think it's a slouch for sure yeah i'm gonna have to take that seriously after i get a, a few monocrops and no more no more pheno hunts for a while Jeez. that's all i home grow for anymore is just fucking pheno hunting and head stash <laughs> it's like that's just like the best <laughs> The patients are like, this is nice. You know, it's like a little buffet. I can try a little bit of everything. But uh, where's the OG and sour? <laughs> yeah, I had to run a whole quad of Spartan glue. And uh, the last ounce went away today. So <laughs> it 
it still goes. I mean, I should just fucking monocrop that all day long, but uh, I get sick of the same thing over and over. <laughs> uh, Mish medicated or bad bunny? You guys read in anything high in uh, limey? Limey? Uh, we got that sour sister over here. That's a uh, that's a sour diesel chum dog and trace dog. Sour diesel is pretty much a staple in my garden. And then I'm also running a OBS number three. And when I was pruning it the other day, I could already smell the orange in the... Yeah, you're like the you're the queen of the sour D. Like you that's the... How many times... you? That's been at least three times you've uh, done like a pheno hunt on it, haven't you, since I've uh, met you or twice? Yeah, I yeah, I have like, that's my most populated plant. I have nine of those going right now. So I'm a, I am love it because it's a, it's good yield, good potency. It's an awesome plant, so. <laughs> so are you doing seed runs with that every time or do you have like a keeper cut yet? I have a keeper cut, but I'm still popping some seeds, yeah. That's like, badass. That's dedication right there. Exactly. You're you're treating the diesel like uh, I do the OG. You're, like, you're mastering it, but you have one more advantage. You can keep pheno hunting, and maybe you get something better while you're learning that one. Right. I got to get a cut of your keeper, uh, Sour D, by the way. When uh, was it? Hash Bash? You be at Hash Bash? Yes, I will be there. I might have to fucking come out to Hash Bash just to get a cut of that. So you, got, you got to come. It's turning into a, a pretty cool thing. Like It's sounding like we're going to have just a massive grosties, you know, just a mob walking through. <laughs> I'm going to have to figure out how I'm going to be carrying all these clones through that. Mob of people. Oh my god, I'm not even trying to think about that. <laughs> we'll, we'll organize some that kind guy. of like clone that swap guy. or something at the park or for that kind of thing. We'll just bring stuff to smoke when we're walking through. So I'm pretty sure we can do that. But uh, next up is uh, we got this is a favorite on the show. And what was I thought was really cool is when I got my OG extracted, it just tasted pure like pine. And uh, the terpene, the name says it all. It tastes like pine. Pine is found, you know, most abundantly in the pine tree and is what gives pine needles its distinctive spell. Ugh, I love stuttering. Found in two varieties, alpha, which is responsible for the wonderful pine aroma. And beta, which has a scent like rosemary, dill, or parsley. Pining is a strong bronco. bronco man, I cannot talk tonight, but it's good for the bronchitis. Bron bronchial dilator or something? Don't yeah. worry. I'm, I'm sure um, Jack Greenstock will be in the chat when this goes live, and he'll yep. just cor correct us on all of this. So that would be great. Thanks, Jack. Yeah. Yeah. And thanks, Jack, for coming on for part two and correcting us. But uh, it's it's great for it's a super strong anti-inflammatory and antiseptic effects. That's why it's you know used in a ton of you see it in cleaning products like pine salt, and it's been used for centuries in herbal medicines. That's why you see it in a ton of movies. People uh, was it boiling pine needles in water when they're out in the out in the bush. And then there's this whole movement now called uh, forest bathing, maybe something similar to that where they go out into pine forests on purpose and they just walk through and breathe the air and they've actually been able to test their blood and they found elevated levels of uh, alpha pining in their blood just from breathing in around the pine trees so uh, those terpenes that are being released in the air that the reason you're smelling that is because that's a terpene that's off gassing that's what you're getting so uh, you're breathing that in too so that's there's awesome. medicinal benefits of that Oh, I love terpenes. Aren't we glad we jumped into that tonight? But at the same time, you know, like our my buddy Zinthanol or Zinc Angel would tell you, mm -hmm. uh, they can also be used for pesticides. And like you already mentioned, uh, cleaners. So this, 
in higher concentrations, they can be not so good. Yeah, I guess, yeah, that would be really irritating to high a lot of pine, or high amount of pine. I believe, I believe if you uh, make a pine needle tea, I believe that helps with your, uh, your immune system and uh, like the common cold and uh, things, things of that nature as well. Well, I know what I have written down for pining was uh, it helps with memory. So if somebody maybe concussed, you know, concussions, I would, you know, reach for an awful pining. Or maybe just a stoner that's tired of being, you know, forgetting things. Hey, let's get some awful pining in your life. <laughs> it's it's uh, antibacterial. So, you know, that's interesting thing to know as far as commercially growing things. is like, hey, we're being tested for microbes if it's uh, alpha high in alpha pining maybe the microbes will be reduced because it's anti you know bacterial mm -hmm. then uh anti-inflammatory was the other one i had written down that you had mentioned so like arthritis and, you know, fun stuff like that alpha pining might be helpful for you yep and it's uh found in popular strains like strawberry cough and blue dream I also have written down that it can inhibit cancer growth too. So that's a good one. Yeah. And uh, next up, we got linen law, linen law, yeah. linen blue. I love getting all tongue tied. If you ever use lavender for its relaxing effects, then you're familiar with the terpene linen all. Linen all is widely known. <laughs> For its stress relieving any oxid any anxiety and any depressant effects. Linolol can help to balance out the anxious side effects sometimes produced by THC. Ideal ter which is the it's the ideal free anxiety from science study anyways, but from what I've found, terpenes affect everybody differently. But that's this is that's a good one to go off of. Uh, you can find it in strains like Amnesia Haze, which I grew for years, and I gave everybody actually a cross of that in my OG uh, at the last get together. And then Special Kush, which I've never had before, and OG Shark. Never heard of it. Now, do you, do you think that's in all, all the hazes or just the Amnesia Haze? I think what which this is going to kind of go go back to your uh, to your nose. If I think if it's a haze that smells kind of like lavender, then yeah, I would say yeah, it's probably got it in there. You know, that's gonna it's gonna be like a like if in nature. I, I wrote this down just to help me understand it. Was you can find the that terpene in lavender, cinnamon, laurel, birch, coriander, and rosewood. So any of those like flowery smells, I attribute to all oh, that's probably that linalool that's what's going to give me that that uh what were we talking here uh well anti-convulsant which i thought was a good one for you know people that have epilepsy things like that it's also good for pain reliever because it's uh, anesthetic so it's like a numbing kind of a way to stop pain and then uh you already mentioned anti-anxiety but uh so that's Usually, I attribute to the more sativa-leaning strains. You know, it's the the ones that make you happier and stuff like that, and they tend to be more floral, especially the hazes. A lot of the hazes smell like flowers to me. That's what I was going to ask. Like, what you got? What do you guys think uh, that smell is, or that taste is, when you have it, a flower, like a floral? When I say, like, when I said uh, hibiscus or whatever, like that taste, that's what I'm thinking. Yeah, I would guess that, that that would be my best guess would be like a linalool because I don't know the hundred terpenes. I only know like the major ones. That's the uh, that's the direction I would go. I'm sure it's like a huge combination, but I would yeah. say it's linalool heavy. And then uh, next one we got next up we got another tongue tire, which is uh, carophyllene. I'm sure I'm slaughtering that too. I do the same thing. I call it carafeline, but <laughs> it could be wrong too. I don't know. Beta yeah. caryophylline. That's what it is. Caryophylline is what it is. Okay. 
This terpene, which has a spicy, woody, peppery scent, this is one of the ones I just, I, I taste this in a strain. It's like, it's cut, not keeping this one, but people like Skilbo, and they, he, he loves this. But uh, it's, it's your black pepper and cinnamon, which actually is funny that my OG tests with the cinnamon in it, but it's the, it's the minor taste in it. And uh, studies indicate that this one, this one small terpene is capable of performing the big job of treating anxiety, depression, and inflammation. Carolophylline is found in such strains as Super Silver Haze, Skywalker, and Rockstar. The crazy thing about this too that I found when I was researching on it was is that uh, it's kind of near and dear to my heart because my father was an alcoholic was it treats it could treat alcoholism because it doesn't bound to the CB1 receptor like most all the other major you know cannabinoids and it's like CBD it bonds to the CB2 receptor I thought that was interesting and then they said they use it. There's there's been studies and or they're currently running studies uh, for the treatment of alcoholism to see if uh, it'd be effective in that way. And it, it's something I need to like just suck up and learn how to enjoy because honestly, I mean, I deal with anxiety and it's like the, this this smell or this taste right here is like I associate it with like dark purple strains. Uh, and it normally turns me away, but I mean, I do feel really, really good after I uh, medicate with it, like Red's Girls Gone Wild. Uh, it'll literally take you down and just mellow you out from no matter what kind of uh, cannabis you smoke, and you just feel medicated with no fog. For me, that was, I don't have it anymore, but I do have one seed left, so I'm waiting for that special day whenever I decide to pop it, and hopefully it's a female, but it was called Puzzle Piece. I don't remember if you remember when Tricky D and uh, Landon Air collabed for uh, Jinx Proof yep. at Charity, and uh, they crossed uh, Landon Air's uh, South Florida Crippy with Tricky D's Blue Raspberry, I think it was. I can't remember what a strain was, but that strain was what i just called happy weed i could smoke that and then it doesn't matter what mood i was in it would make me happy as fuck it was great i can't remember how i lost it but i lost this shit <laughs> but i do have a seed i'd like to smoke that that's like uh weed tube history right there that strain that was real popular there for a while <laughs> yeah snag me that i can't i think it was only like a five pack and i think i got a bunch of males and only had the one female, and it did pretty good. And I don't remember how I lost it. I lost it somehow, but uh, I do have one seed because I just found it the other day, and I was pretty happy. All right. Next up, we have humulene. While other strains help to increase appetite, which is beneficial to those who have conditions like nausea from, you know, cancer or, you know, Whatever, and strains that contain humulene may actually help to decrease appetite. Whoa, uh oh, we got our weight loss one right here. Yeah, uh, they're actually using it for that in studies. That it actually is being used as a weight loss uh, treatment. So this is this is why right here is why I, I talk about how the OG helped me with my weight loss. Every time I got hungry, I would start eating, and one of the dominant tastes in the OG is hops. And this is found in hops, cloves, basil. Humulene is also shown to be anti-inflammatory and have antibacterial properties. Strains that contain humulene include the Abolished OG, Liberty Haze, Girl Scout Cookies, and Sour Diesel. You guys uh, have any experience with uh, humulene in any of your main cuts? I mean, right there, Sour D, we know uh, Michigan Medicaid has that. What do you find uh, that strain does for you? She must fell asleep or something right past her bedtime. No, I had to, I had my microphone mute. <laughs> um, I feel like it's really uplifting. It helps me to like get out of my funk and just function in the day today in a positive manner. 
like totally turns my day from negative to positive. Spot on. Sounds That's exactly the best way I, I can explain it. <laughs> Just fucking happy weed is what it is. Yeah. What about the appetite part? That since you know you get to medicate with a lot of it, dude, does it kill your appetite? You know, if you get hungry, can you roll a joint and buy yourself an hour or two? Um, I've never actually tried to use it for that, but it is a strain that doesn't give me munchies like the GG4. I get crazy munchies on the sour diesel. I don't. So, yeah, I see that. Right. Maybe I'll try it. <laughs> How badass would that be if you could uh, sell your weed and say, hey, this will help you lose weight? Holy fuck. Weed already sells itself as it is. All right. And then, uh, as we were saying, cannabis contains some like 100, 100 known terpenes right now. And we just, we only talked about what, five or six there. And those are like the, the main ones. And all of these produce their own effects combined with cannabinoids and other terpenes. The future of uh, cannabis, you know, is insane. There's literally, there should be a, a strain out there that can be catered to everybody's certain needs or certain effects that they, you know, that they want. It is absolutely insane. But what we can do with this plan and how important terpenes are. That's why I wanted to, you know, dedicate an episode to, to terpenes. And I actually hope that we can get into flavonoids too, because I thought I consider them to be really, really important. But before we get there, you guys got anything else to say on terpenes themselves? No, I think we covered it, man. Then we, uh, I also just want to quickly talk, I had in my notes here to talk about the entourage effect, which includes, that would be, you know, the terpenes, the THC, the CBD, all the can cannabinoids, cannabinoids and tongue tie like hell tonight, uh, working together to get that specific need that you, or medication that you need. That's why one plant works for one person and doesn't work for the other. I, it's really, really good. It, cool how specific well, the can be yeah and that goes i mean we're still learning about this plan we don't even know what the fuck's going on when it comes to the entire process and everything that's going so that's why like what about just saying is really important don't don't give up if you if you smoked one joint of something and it was terrible or you can get the result you were looking for don't give up find your strain that that's what that's what you have to do find your strain find the strain that works for you so it's really good advice. And uh, when we consider the 200 or more bioactive compounds that have been discovered in cannabis, you know, beyond just uh, the terpenes, uh, often the more widely understood cannabinoids and terpenes, that, you know, that's, that's normally what everybody cares. They just care about the high THC numbers. But these aren't the only important compounds produced by cannabis. Take flavonoids, for example. They account for roughly 10% of these known compounds with around 20 varieties known to exist in cannabis. Flavonoids are not unique to the cannabis plant. Scientists have identifi identified thousands of them all throughout nature, from flowers, fruits, and vegetables. However, there are known specific ones to cannabis, and they're actually called cannaflavins, which I thought was really cool. I didn't know they had their own specific name. No, I haven't heard that either. Mm -hmm. Similar to terpenes, flavonoids share a role in which we perceive cannabis through our senses. But there is a lot more to flavonoids than what meets our nose and taste buds. In fact, in fact flavonoids are among the most understudied compounds found within the plant. And I mean, even when we go beyond flavonoids, like another instance where I wish we had Jack here where we can start talking about esters and alcohols and what they're going to start doing for us. We're just, we're completely missing out when we're only focusing on THC and CBD. Yeah, for sure. I think, yeah, I, I, I sound like a broken record to myself even, but 
all I can say is just keep trying shit until you find the one that you like because it's a mistake to just go into a, a dispensary and look for the highest number you can find unless you really unless you're looking for edibles then that works but uh otherwise you know just find your strain find the strain that you like because especially with flour uh on concentrates then i think when you have stuff concentrated at such levels that you know that amount of thc is going to affect someone no matter what their tolerance is um it might be a different story but for flour specifically i would just like especially if you're blessed enough to like us to live in michigan and be able to go and sample different strains often by just going down to the your local provisioning center man take advantage of that freedom and maybe you'll find something special and uh we often attribute the flavors and aromas of uh cannabis to the terpenes however flavonoids also play a really really important role and providing the distinguishing qualities we use to see the difference between strain varieties. Both odor and flavor are possible in cannabis due to the synergistic qualities that terpenes and flavonoids share with one another. Moreover, flavonoids also affect the pigmentation of cannabis just as they do in other flowers. Those beautiful deep purple cannabis strains owe their coloration to the flavonoids known as anthocyanins. In other plants, such as berries, anthocyanins may cause red, purple, blue coloration depending on pH level, which we, we've dived in uh, those quite a bit in uh, other shows. I'm not sure, I can't remember which one's off the top of our head, my head. Yeah, but basically talking about purple strains. And yeah. And then uh, providing color, pigmentation, odor, flavor, and protection weren't enough. Research has so shown that flavonoids are also Highly pharmacologically active, including preliminary research indicating the medicinal benefits of cannaflavins found in exclusively in cannabis. So, for example, cannaflavin A is pharmacologically active with studies showing that it has anti-inflammatory properties and that it might be stronger than freaking aspirin, which, I mean, we kind of already know that as users. And cannaflavin B and C are also being studied for their potential medicinal benefits. Other highly active flavonoids in cannabis include anti-inflammatory, antifungal, antioxidant, and anti-cancer potential. I mean, it's we can't just go, like I said, you can't just go for THC and CBD, guys. That's the whole point. One, I guess that's turned into the whole point of this episode here. We've gone really deep in the terps. Well, I think it's really important just medicinally, too. That's why flour will always have a place. Because flour is probably the closest you're going to get to the most full profile. You know, because every piece of processing, you remove something or something is lost. So, yeah, I think there's always going to be a place medicinally for flour because then you might get, like, what we're talking about now, all these things I'm learning, I, these these flavonoids that are specific to cannabis only, these canna flavonoids or whatever they're calling it, that's fucking crazy. So, I mean, I wonder how much of those things are being lost in in each different processing, you know, like well, different extraction processes. You know, it'd be interesting to see where, where the future will uh, take us because who knows, maybe there'd be like a, maybe alcohol extraction, hopefully, because <laughs> I already got the machine for that will be the way to like preserve the most. Cause I've always been this proponent of full, full extracts, you know, try to get the most full profile as possible. Like I'll even do multiple strains in my, you know, all that are so that you're enjoying that was a multiple strain run because I try to get as much of a the profile as I can in my extract. Full spectrum medicine. And I guess, I mean, that, that we can kind of pivot, use that to pivot into our next topic, which was, uh, talking about giving the plant like what's better giving the plant everything that it possibly needs uh or say you know giving it a positive stress like putting it in a shit soil condition say like spain and they're uh the, i believe it's they're, they're really good with their vineyards there and they're famous for their flavor and that's not be, not necessarily because they have super awesome soil 
that's because they have uh, shit soil there that has a certain microbe that thrives there and brings out that certain terpene. Yeah, there's an old saying, and I'm high, so I'll probably fuck it up, but there's it's something to the effect of to make good wine, the grape must suffer. So it has to have a stress for it to make really good wine. It's And it's crazy, the amount of different things that can... Like I've seen it over the years with my OG with everything from doing training stress to bug stress to overwater stress to, you know, a complete over nutrient stress and the different effects that it can do to resin production, bud uh, stacking and whatnot, you know. It's crazy how many different stresses that you can do to this plant and cause just one strain to look a hundred different ways. And especially on the flower, like the flower changes, the, the formation of the flower can be different from just different environments. It could be something as simple as a different environment. You know, you might have had a larger degree swing than you did the run before or something insane like that or the air movement was you know you you put the fan one degree you know higher or lower it can make a big difference every little thing we do can make a difference and i don't know if you guys have seen it but i in uh in regenerative builds or whatever uh, quite a few times i'll run actually phosphor phosphorus deficient in the end and for some reason, if I feel like strains are so much louder and more like beautiful, like the colors and whatnot, when they they run out of phosphorus and they go phosphorus deficient for those last couple of weeks. I'll tell you what, one thing I just learned recently was, is that they did a study and a phosphorus deficiency in cannabis specifically did not correlate to a lower yield. So to me, that means that's something I can sacrifice if I want to at the end. So I agree with you, man. That's, I mean, I guess that would be why I don't, I see there's not a huge uh, yield difference between say something like I'm using now, which is Bad Bunny, which is even one, one, one compared to uh, what I was using down to earth, which has actually got a really high PK. The, the yield's the same. I mean, it's negligible. One might beat the other by 10 grams here and there. And you're fucking probably paying far less than you were. So that's yeah. a win-win, dude. I'm still working on my first bucket. And I put them in every bed. Yeah, that stuff does last a long time. 30 bucks and you're good to go. Yeah, I've been... Uh... I put uh, some on top of all my clones. I like to put them in my clones because it's not really going to burn them, but it'll give them a little bit of nutrition. And they always seem to fucking just blow up in there. So I keep using it. I'm pretty excited. I mean, we're sitting here talking about how great it is uh, without phosphorus in it or how possibly great it could be. And uh, they actually just, they got in the mail right now, uh, their new recipe that actually has higher PK in it. I'm going to be testing that out for them, I think, on the, the next run. But they got a few other things in there. Like, they, they opened my eyes to they maybe not a diatomaceous earth hater no more. It's, they showed me how it actually helps uptake and stuff like that when it's in the actual soil, not using it for IPM. Yeah, it can be used, like, as a soil conditioner. It actually holds water. Yeah, that is. I mean, yeah, I can see that. That stuff's terrible when it gets wet on the top of the soil. But, um, and you know, the subject right here just really gets me thinking, like, because I, I mean, as a regenerative farmer, you're normally trying to have every single little thing in your pot there, and you're hoping that, you know, your plant will take what it's needed, what needs to be at its highest possible potential. And maybe that's not the exact route. Say like uh, you're dealing with anxiety and you're wanting to bring out the terpene that deals with anxiety and say running phosphorus deficient or running low water conditions uh, brings out that terpene. Like that's, I think that's data and studies and stuff that I'd really like to figure out. Yeah, for sure. The different stressors and you know any of the any of those things could be a stressor you just could can you find what 
stressor will trigger with the outcome you're looking for you know that's and there might be something that's is off the wall that you wouldn't think of it is such as like a light spectrum change you know a lot of people back when nobody was really running leds they would like to put that metal halide back in for the last two weeks of flower for a finisher or whatever so a light spectrum change is all it was and that affected the plant in a way to well i guess you could call it a positive way so you know it can be something so so off the wall so i mean you can really go deep with that that was a really cool trick back in the day you would lose say maybe an ounce or two in your yield but you would gain so much in uh flavor and aroma it was a really cool trick sometimes color people are doing it now with the cmhs they say that you throw a cmh bulb for the, like a finishing bulb throw that in there because it's a i don't know if this is right i'd, I'd have to look but i think it's a closer cri in in a ceramic metal halide which uh cri just means as close to the sun as possible so if you had 100 cri you would be the sun and this is like high 90s i think those bulbs well we're accidentally gonna see some some a little bit of data on that actually uh in the spartan grown tent because that's the tent that i had my one uh i wrap it puck i it must have been either when i i set it up or i don't know or my one setup was defective but i actually had some kind of arc and i had wiring uh fry up and i had it was pulsing on me so i had to get it out of there and i got to rewire it tonight and uh i put my cmh in there and that was i'd say probably around day 35 so that'd be perfect finishing time for the strains that i have in there to have it in there for whatever the last three four weeks yeah i i mean shit the picture i saw looked pretty fucking good already dude yeah, I, they're they're definitely liking it. I wasn't, I, I really wasn't sweating. I've always, I've been using the CMH for quite a few years now. I won one uh, from Megro R1, one of our fellow Michigan guys on his, uh, I think it was like his 20,000 or 50,000 subscriber. Like that guy's got some kind of ridiculous number, but it was his grand prize giveaway. And uh, yeah, I've been using that since then. And every garden that I've had under it has been just stellar. And i really really don't know why i didn't go to cmh uh when i did my conversion other than you know i was real hyped up on the led bandwagon which it i i get it if i was running if i had all the modifications prehand for the environment and all that yeah it, it is cheaper but i wasn't ever warned about that beforehand so i ended up spending a ton of money getting my stuff LED ready in here. Yeah, I do run one CMH. I, I run my mother's under them actually. So, so I know it's a good fucking bulb, but uh, the, I don't like running it in production because it just seemed to heat the room. I didn't like the heat. I still got a lot of heat off of those three 315s. I don't know why. Maybe I got a, because I have an old one or something, but uh, my LEDs run a lot cooler than that thing. So I don't like running it in the flower room. I got the the Grower's Choice 315. Uh, it, it it would run, I'd say, probably 85s in there. You know, but, I mean, it was still good. Just running ambient air, like household air through there, it was enough to keep them cool. Or keep that one cool, I should say. Yeah, the but one I, I have. Three in one spot. Yeah, the one I have is a sun system or something like that. So maybe it's just not as good. <laughs> or maybe not as efficient. I'm, yeah, I'm pretty sure Grow Destroy is supposed to be one of the top of the lines for CMH. I mean, of course, Hortolux too. You can't you can't mess with the top dogs. They 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 kill it when it comes to HID. But uh, any uh, Mr. Medicaid, do you have any experience with positive stress or any kind of input on you know what do you think about do we do we need to give the plant everything it needs? Um, I don't know a lot about it. I, I, I definitely had instances where I've fucked things up and it turned out to be better in the end, like breaking off a, a large portion of a branch and that plant having a huge yield effect. But um, anything deeper than that, no, I don't have any input. 
Yeah, I was just curious because, I mean, like I say, you've been running the Sour D for a while, so you'd be able to see it with a few different nutrient lines. And I guess that, that's another thing we can talk about, too, is like since you have a cut that you've been running for a while, did the different nutrient lines and soils, have you noticed like any distinct terpenes coming out? Mm. Or say like one that you really didn't like the taste of your Sour D running it? No, I mean, there's I, recently I've added the LED, and that that's definitely I really like the the taste after the LED. I feel like it's it's brought a lot more frost and um, resin on the plants with the LED. So that's why I switched my whole fucking uh, flower room. Actually, my bedroom, too. They're all under LED because <clears throat> I noticed right away the fucking, uh, just like what she was saying, the, the frost production, especially, I thought. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I is it a mixture in the temperature and the, um, you know, light spectrum? Or is it, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I think it's that's that's actually a really good point is it could be because my room tend to stay warmer when i switched over to a light that operates better in a warmer environment that probably helps a lot but then i think light spectrum is probably the biggest part because you know when you're going from like uh like i was i was going from uh those ceramic metal highlight it was i was flowering underneath that and i went from that to the um HLG 550 you get I think I had a little bit more like red in that so it gives you a little bit more of that HPS <laughs> like I say the weight it brings a little bit more of the weight and then if you get an R spec I got just the 360 R spec and that thing fucking crushes so when my next light breaks I'm getting another I'm just going to get a 550 R spec because that shit the spectrum for sure makes a huge difference yeah, no doubt. Like, if you have everything going in your grow and dialed in, LED is definitely the way to go because you have those specific spectrums to bring out the secondary metabolites and everything to, for those terpenes and flavonoids that we were talking about tonight that you're not really going to get with the the HPS unless you're, you know, good at, I guess you could probably get it through your feeding of the plant and whatnot and little tricks and whatnot if you were an advanced grower. But it's a lot easier to do it with the LED and the dialed in spectrum. The the HPS is like a, a absolute like Niagara Falls of photons with all the spectrum mixed in there, but not uh, enough of certain ones dialed in for your plant to get the most out of those secondary uh, metabolites. Yeah, I've noticed quite a few times over the years using uh, different nutrients that, like on my first, actually with my first run with uh, Fat Bunny, which I thought was really interesting, is uh, the test plant with a fresh Coco Loco in it actually had like a, a great uh, undertone to the OG, which was completely unique. I haven't had it again, uh, though, since then, since that run, which I thought was kind of weird, too. Have you ever used uh, M3 Mix? Have you ever grown in that at all? No, if I would have known about those guys back when I would first started looking for soil, I so would have did it, but I had no idea there was a good Michigan company. I'm just saying that brought, that was the thing that in my recent, my, what I can remember right now is when I switched to M3, it, it brought, when I, I did amend it, but uh, did the flavor was just like everything was a little bit different. Uh, just like what you're saying, you find a weird undertone that you've never noticed before. Like for example, the Spartan glue, where there's like a pepper, like a cracked pepper. Like it was like you just cracked some pepper and it smelled just like that. And I never smelled that before. I thought that, yeah, I, I thought that was interesting in this one uh, when I was trying it, but the pepper was, uh, it was taken out by the, or it was, I wasn't offensive because of the glue taste in it. Yeah, I yeah, wouldn't it like that. yeah. It was, it was good, man. I would say I don't want to give a review here because it's going to go on the, the I mean Red's new little caregiver tested show, but it's it's going to be good. 
<laughs> see, and then I'm excited to see, you know, this is very relevant too. I'm excited to see what the glue tastes like in your system, you know, you, you know how you run it because for sure, whatever you come out with, it's going to be a little bit different. You know what I mean? There's no way we can exactly copy each other. Yeah. yeah so I, I get a kick out of that too. Just like, like, oh yeah, that's just, you know, or, or I taste a little bit more of this or that's interesting. I get a little bit of that. I love that shit. Yep. I, it's nice for helping your, your buddies too. Like I haven't got to sit down with Scoobo yet, but just by tasting his OG when he grew it, I can give him like a couple tips throughout his grow, like things to, to change, to bring stuff out, to make it even better. That's badass to, to know your plant that well, to be able to do that. Or like uh, Michigan Medicaid, is, I'm sure she could do the same thing with her sour D. You know what I mean? She'd be like, well, you know, this is what you do because this is how you treat that bitch. <laughs> I, can, I can tell if you overfed it. I can tell if you dried it too long, all that good stuff. But uh, what else would I want to talk about? I also want to talk about a thing, what I noticed in the past is when I ran really, really high amounts of rock dust in my, uh, my beds and whatnot, the flavors and the aromas were, I would say, a lot louder than what I do now. And the only reason I cut them out is because of the new heavy metal scares that we have with organic farming I'm trying to keep it so freaking minimal so i don't fail tests yeah that would be i would just say what i would do in that case because i i have heard people say the same thing it's it's basically the bricks way of growing it's high mineral high mineral density and you know they raise your bricks and that'll make everything kind of sweeter because the plant will be able to make more sugars and blah 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 i believe that it's probably true I don't know if it's cost effective. I haven't really looked into it, but if I were going to do that, I would just go to build a soil, you know, build soil.com because that Jeremy, you know, shout out to Jeremy Silva. He does all the research on all the products that he sells. And not only does he do the research, then he, when he gets the product, he sends it off and gets it tested for heavy metals and everything else and make sure what they say, you know, he, he's getting, he's getting. So, if I was had those concerns and, and I wanted to do that, that's what I would do. Just go to build a soil and get whatever there. I think that he doesn't have the rock dust. He uses the basalt. But, uh, I mean, you'd get the same benefit, I would imagine. I'd love to reach out to him and see if he wants to do some kind of collabs and whatnot. You know, let us get some testing on this, on the Coco Loco, like some real testing from somebody that's real passionate about it, like from him. And, you know, especially some of the stuff that I've had running for like six, seven years now. And, uh see if he can actually maybe build us something better you know yeah that would be freaking awesome i just wish you know he had uh, a satellite you know set situation here or something because anything that he can do for us it's all well and good but we're still paying to ship it across the fucking half the country yeah and that's the biggest thing why i go with the coco locos because i don't really i don't want to mix it and my experience with building super soils and stuff like that in the past is it's like Russian roulette on a cooking game, unless you have like six months or more to always give the soil. Or you just go buy a bag of M3 mix and you throw it in a pot and you put your plant in there and you just give it water for its whole fucking life. Do they have a, a cocoa like super soil type mix like the Coco Loco? There's cocoa, there's cocoa in there. It's a cocoa peat blend and it, and it, <clears throat> and it also has perlite. And I just took a hit. I can't talk. <laughs> and, <laughs> but yeah, it's got cocoa. It's it's cocoa's in the mix too. But it's you know, it's more soil. I treat it like soil. I believe yeah, on the bag it does say to to do like a soil pH. You know, like a six five or some six six. Might be a, when uh, we set up another ten. Uh, I might be able to talk Missy into trying it because when we get a new one, I want to give her her own little dedicated grow it is kind of expensive but when you consider that <clears throat> you can actually run it just water only i do do a few top dressings now to just kind of squeak more yield out of it but uh i mean you can do just water straight water only but i pay at my grow store just regular price i think it's like 30 bucks a bag and it's a two cubic foot bag i believe so yeah i think I, that's uh, kind of expensive but 
I like it because I'm not, it's my, it's my medium and my nutrient all in one. You know what I mean? <laughs> that peace of mind is I think worth the extra, whatever, six, seven bucks that I pay to the, these guys that have the, the pre-built bag. Like they, I get so much gripe for that in like organic or whatever, regenerative chats or whatever. Like, why don't you just build your own? Cause I'd rather just pay a couple more bucks and support somebody that really has a passion about building soil. <clears throat> exactly. If I, I want to, I want to focus on growing the plant the best I can do. So if somebody has that same focus on building that kind of a soil, just to, just the love of the soil, fuck yes, I want his soil. You know what I mean? So I don't. If people can talk all the shit they want. And I'll just sit back and smoke my fucking awesome weed. You know who cares? Talk your shit, man. I'll just keep growing and and I'll test new things. But you got to beat the M3 now. That's what's Spartan approved at this moment. <laughs> Yeah, the, like I said, the only thing that scares me is a little bit of peat in there. But I like that they have the cocoa. That's cool. Yeah, I really I really liked it. Uh, was it was M.I. Kitten and, or I've mixed up their name, M.I. No-Till Guy and Cannon Kitten, uh, that they just did their new regenerative bed as uh, a super cocoa, kind of like how we build here. I had no idea they did that. It's awesome. That's the yeah, biggest that's cool. uh, cocoa regenerative system that I know of right now. I don't know how regenerative cocoa is. That's still getting shipped across the oceans and shit. We don't have any coconut trees around here. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I wonder what would be that because we know Pete's not the end game result or answer either. Like, what can we really use here in Michigan? Pete. <laughs> <laughs> Go chop up a bunch of uh, get a bunch of chopped up uh, grow cubes or whatever. I don't know. What was it Eagle does a uh, was it? He's got like a wood chip type of thing, doesn't he? That's like, cocoa. That, is it the, cocoa? The, yeah, okay. it's just a bigger chunk. You know, it's chunked cocoa. All right. Yeah, I mean, it's really good uh, show tonight. We're past the terp the terpene uh, topic now. We're just kind of rambling but i mean i'm i'm down to keep going we we'll keep talking it's uh it's up to you guys or uh we can close it out here yeah i'm getting ready to go to bed so i'm just ready to drop out here anytime anyway you see my eyes are about half closed already <laughs> <laughs> so uh if you got any shout outs and closing statements you want to go ahead and do those yeah, I'll just shout out to uh, Mitten Canico. It's uh, my work, you know. I don't know. It's my pride and joy too. So, shout out to those guys and all the work we're doing out there. Uh, shout out to the Michigan Bros Grow Show for sure. Um, dropping that awesome video of Mitten Canico. Speaking of, um, I always have an awesome time with you guys. You know that. I'm not gonna be long winded, but uh, shout out to Michigan Medicated for joining us today. So we weren't just two guys talking forever. So that was cool. Although she didn't talk too much. <laughs> yeah, you were still two guys talking forever, but I enjoyed <laughs> listening to it. It was great. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'll just say uh, growers love everybody. Yeah, definitely. Thanks for uh, joining these two old Jedis just rambling here to break it up for the people. And uh, what about you? You got any shout outs and closing statements? Um, thanks for having me on and shout out to you too for um, teaching me what you guys know tonight. I enjoyed listening to the conversation. Oh, and you can find her at uh, Michigan Medicated on Instagram, right? You got Correct. cannabis or anything else? I do not. Right. And hopefully we'll keep, uh, we'll see you next week here. Sounds good. <laughs> awesome. And uh, I got a shout out, of course, you guys, the uh, my fellow Force <laughs> users, the the Jedi's, the Sis, the Grays. You know, we love you guys. And uh, I also got a shout out, of course. You know, the rest of the the whole Michigan Bro Grows, the the Groskies. You know, our our whole community there. It's just awesome the support we get and whatnot. You know, I, I was so worried last night that I didn't filter out enough wind noise and just everybody 
and still loved the episode and they're completely understanding and it was awesome you know and definitely shout out to you guys for having us out that was freaking awesome this dude, best episode we done dude i had a fucking great time man we, and i'm sure we'd be happy to have you out again so we'll just have to figure it out <laughs> I'm sure we learned some things for the first time, but I, dude, I was literally, I was fucking amazed. I sat down as soon as I came home from work, took a shower, ate some dinner, came down here, was hitting the bong and watching that episode. I was waiting all day, you know, and uh, I was shocked how, how you made it just like you made the voices jump out. I was like, fuck, I can actually hear them. That's, I was, I was really impressed. You already know, or I blew your chat up. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Hey. Stop focusing on the wind noise and I focused on the people's voices and it all worked out. You know, learning how to edit as I go here, guys. I didn't go to school for this. As you can see, you know, the progression over the last couple of months here since I started producing for uh Michigan Bros. But uh I hope I yeah, I, I gotta shout out the beautiful Miss C. I can't I can't ever forget about her. And I'd also like to shout out my sponsors. They're awesome people. You know, I, you guys know I used all of them before I ever decided to work with them. Mantis Genetics, Bad Bunny Nutrients, and Easy Swap Pots. Most of them have active codes with me, which is always going to be abolished. Anytime I'm working with a company, guys, I will push to have that as the discount code for you because I just want to make it easy and whatnot on you. And, uh, I hope everybody has a super, super dang weekend. Yeah, because this will be Saturday night when this comes out. And may the frugal force be with you. Oh. I hate goodbyes. <laughs> Just go. Damn button. Push the goddamn button. You heard what she said.